Hello students, in the last class we discussed about few important properties related to the fluids. So first of all what are fluids? Any substance which can flow under the influence of external force are called as fluids. Both the liquids and gases are collectively called as fluids. Any solid or any liquid can be considered as what? a fluid. And we know that fluid always exerts force on any surface which is in contact with it. That force acting per unit area is nothing but pressure, the fluid pressure. So how it is acting? The pressure force due to the pressure always acts normal to the surface. And we also discussed about atmospheric pressure that is nothing but the pressure exerted by the atmosphere on the earth that is atmospheric pressure and the pressure at any point inside the liquid which is nothing but hydrostatic pressure. The difference between the hydrostatic pressure and the atmospheric pressure is nothing but gauge pressure that is equal to h into rho into g where h is the depth to a particular point inside the liquid, rho is the density and g is the acceleration due to gravity. And we also discussed about Pascal's law. So what does it states? The pressure at each and every point inside a liquid which is in equilibrium is always same. And few important applications of Pascal's law, hydraulic brakes, hydraulic lift as well as hydraulic press. Next Archimedes principle. When an object is immersed partially or completely in a liquid, then it suffers an apparent loss in weight. Actual weight always remains same. That object experiences an upward force, which is called as buoyant force, and that phenomenon is buoyancy. Next, we also discussed about loss of flotation. So, whether the object floats at the surface of the liquid or it sinks at the bottom that will depend upon the densities of the solid as well as what liquid and so these are the things which are discussed when the fluid is at rest next fluids can have two types of motion one is streamlined flow which is nothing but ordered flow which is nothing but regular flow of liquid so when liquid is have moving with small velocity lesser velocity that is called as streamline Streamlines are nothing but, it may be a straight line or what, a curved line. It is drawn in such a way that the tangent drawn to the line at each and every point indicates the direction of the flow of liquid. Next, if the velocity of the fluid increases continuously, then the flow is called as turbulent. If streamline is ordered, then turbulent means disordered flow of liquid. So, up to what velocity the liquid is having streamline? That is given by critical velocity. It is the velocity up to which the flow is streamlined, after that the flow becomes turbulent. When a liquid is moving in a pipe of non-uniform cross section, area of cross section, we discussed about an equation which is called as equation of continuity, which gives the relation between the area of cross section as well as velocity, how they are related. So actually area of cross section is uh, area of cross section and the velocity are inversely related. That means the product of A and B is always function. If A is more, B should be less. If A is less, B should be more. That is, B is inversely proportional to A or you can write A1 B1 is equal to A2 into B2. So this equation is very important. So based on this, uh, based on this equation, now we are going to discuss one problem. So water is flowing to a pipe. Water is going to a pipe or a tube of non uniform cross section. Ratio of radius at the entry and the exit end of the pipe is 3 is to 2. So, first at the given values, ratio of radius at the entry end is R1, radius at the exit end R2. So, they are given ratio of radius at the entry and exit end. Radius of the tube at the entry end, I will take as R1. Radius of the tube at the exit end, I will take the radius as R2. Ratio of these two radii is given. That is equal to how much? 3 is to 2. So that means if I have the cross section lines. So this particular radius is R1. This radius is about R. So they are asked to calculate the ratio of velocities at the entry and exit. What is the ratio of velocities at the entry and exit? 
What about the ratio of velocity? So I will take the velocity at the exit end as V1 and the exit end velocity as V2. You are asked to calculate the ratio of velocity that is V1 is to V2 is equal to how much? How can you simplify this uh, problem? Again by using the equation of power. Continue. So R1 R2 values are V1. You are asked to calculate the ratio of V1 to V2. So according to the equation of continuity, you can write a1 v1 is equal to a2 into v2. So v1 by v2, v1 by v2, take v2 to the LHS, a1 to the RHS, then it becomes v1 by v2 is equal to a2 by a1. What is a2? Area of cross section at the exit end. What is a1? Area of cross section at the entry end. So what is the formula for area of circulation? By us. So now I can write V1 by V2 is equal to A2 can be written as pi R2 square A1 area of cross section at an entry end that is pi R1 square pi pi gets cancelled then you can write R2 by R1 whole square V1 by V2 is equal to R2 by R1 whole square So the given problem R1 is to R2 R1 by R2 is given how much? 3 is to 2 R1 by R2 is 3 by 2. What about R2 by R1? 2 by 3. Therefore, V1 by V2 is equal to 2 by 3 whole square, which is nothing but V1 by V2 is equal to how much? 4 by 2. Or you can write V1 is to V2 is equal to 4 is to 9. So, this is the ratio of velocities at the entry and exit end. So I repeat once again. So in the given problem, ratio of trade A at the entry and the exit ends are given. You are asked to calculate the ratio of velocities at the entry and exit end. How can you find? By using the equation of continuity. Just here in the terms, write the expression for the area of cross section. Then you get the ratio of velocities as 4 is to 9. Okay, students, next comes a Bernoulli's theorem. When a liquid is in motion, actually it possesses three types of energies. What are those? It possesses pressure energy. When a liquid is in motion, it possesses pressure energy. As well as it also possesses kinetic energy. Why means? So liquid or uh, fluid is in motion and hence obviously it possesses kinetic energy. At the same time, it possesses potential energy. It possesses potential energy. So, whenever a fluid is in streamline motion, it can have or it can possess, actually, it possesses three forms of energies. Pressure energy, due to the pressure difference between the two ends of the tube. Next, kinetic energy, by the virtue of motion of the fluid. And third one is potential energy. So what do you mean by potential energy? The energy possessed by the material by the virtue of its what? Position. So here there is a tube. This end, entry end of this tube is at a height of H1 from the surface. While the exit end is at a height of H2 from the surface. And hence obviously the liquid fluid possesses what type of energy also? Potential energy also. Next coming to the statement. What is the statement of Bernoulli's theorem? It's very simple. So, when a fluid is in streamline motion, streamline flow, the sum of pressure energy, potential energy and kinetic energy is always equal to constant. The sum of the three forms of energies is always equal to a constant. First type of energy is pressure energy, potential energy and kinetic energy. I will take pressure energy as P only. You know the formula for potential energy that is H into rho into G and you also know the form formula for kinetic energy that is half mv square. So I write the equation for the total energy at the two different points. One at, the, one at a point near the entry end and another at the point near the exit end. Here the fluid enters the tube with the velocity v1 and leaves the tube with the velocity v2. So at this point, the pressure energy, I will take the pressure as P1, pressure energy as P1 plus potential energy. This end is at a height of H1 from the surface. Therefore, 
potential energy as H1 into rho into G. What is rho here? At rho means density of the fluid, where G is the acceleration due to gravity. Plus half into rho density of fluid B1, velocity with which the fluid enters the tube. Half into rho into B1 square is equal to. What is this equation? The total energy of the fluid at the exit end, near point at the exit end, that is. At this particular point, pressure as P2, pressure energy is P2 plus height to this particular point from the surface is H2, therefore potential energy is H2 into rho into G plus kinetic energy. The fluid gives the tube with the velocity V2, therefore kinetic energy at that particular point is half into rho into V2 square. So at each and every point, the sum of these three energies are always equal to a constant. That is the statement of Bernoulli's theorem. So uh, I can write this equation as P plus H into rho into G is equal to half rho V square is always equal to a constant. If H1 is equal to H2, if H1 and H2 are same, then you can cancel these two terms. Cancel these two terms. H1 rho G, H2 rho G gets cancelled. If both the ends are at the same height from the surface, the LHS term gets cancelled to the RHS term. Then on, this, on that case, the equation becomes P plus half into rho into V square is equal to a constant. So here half constant, here rho, acceleration density of the fluid is also a constant one. Then what about the important relation between the pressure and the velocity? How they are related? P is inversely proportional to what? V square. What is P here? Pressure. What is V here? Velocity. How they are related? Inversely related. Pressure is inversely related with square of the velocity. That means as the velocity increases, what about the pressure? It decreases to a very large extent. Since P is inversely proportional to V square with the increase in speed, what about the pressure? Pressure decreases to a large extent. This is about Bernoulli's theorem or Bernoulli's principle. Whenever a fluid is in streamline motion, the sum of pressure energy, potential energy, and kinetic energy is always equal to a constant. Next, we are going to discuss the important applications of what uh, uh, Bernoulli's theorem. First one is uplift of an aeroplane. So, after going up to a particular distance uh, with a very high speed, then the aeroplane starts to move up. Actually, this is called as what? This phenomenon is actually called as what? Dynamic lift. How it is possible? So why the aeroplane moves upwards when a, when the speed crosses a particular point? The reason for this is the wings of the aeroplane are designed in a such a way. So this is the upper portion of the wing, and this will be the lower surface. The wings are designed in this particular manner only. So now, how the streamlines of air are moving below the wings? Below the wing. The streamlines of it are going in straight with a particular velocity v1. Above the wing also, how the streamlines of air are moving? Like this. With a particular velocity v2. So below the surface of the wing, the streamlines of air move with the velocity v1. Above the surface of the wing, the streamlines of air are moving with the speed v2. So above the surface of the wing, the streamlines of air must travel a larger distance when compared to the when compared to the streamlines of air below the surface of the wing. So why means the wings are designed in such a way that only therefore streamlines of air above the surface should travel a larger distance when compared to the streamlines of air below the surface of the wing. So in order to compensate this distance travel, the streamlines of air above the surface of the wing travels with a larger speed when compared to the streamlines of air below the surface of wing. So here the distance travelled by streamlines of air is more. Here the distance travelled by streamlines of air is less. So but V1 should be equal to V2. Or distance travelled by streamlines of air from here to here, here to here should be same. In order to compensate this change in distance, variation in distance travelled, so the velocity gets adjusted in such a way that 
streamlines of air above the wing travels in travels with higher velocities why streamlines of air below the surface of the wing travels with lesser velocity we know the formula for velocity velocity is equal to what distance traveled with respect to time if distance traveled is more what about the velocity obviously velocity is also more that means here v2 should be greater than what v1 v2 should be greater than v1 so now here v2 is more v1 is less so according to the valores there how the pressure and velocity are gets related p is inversely proportional to v square if v is more p should be less so here at this particular point i will take the pressure as p2 at this particular point i will take the pressure as p1 the force due to this pressure p2 force due to this pressure p2 acts in which direction downward direction force is always acting downward to the surface the force due to the pressure p1 acts in which direction force due to the pressure p1 acts in upward direction v2 is greater than v1 then as per this relation you can write v2 is greater than v1 therefore you can write p1 should be greater than p2 p1 should be greater than p2 i will take the upward force as f1 downward force as f2 then which one is greater obviously what is the formula for pressure pressure is given by force acting by unit area force due to the pressure p1 can be written as f1 force due to the pressure p2 can be written as f2 so then which force is more obviously f1 is more when compared to the f2 upward force is more when compared to the downward force when this force f1 is greater than the weight of the aeroplane then aeroplane moves in which direction aeroplane moves in upward direction actually this lift is called as, as what dynamic lift this is how the aeroplane moves in which direction upward direction so once i once again i am going to explain this concept the wings of the aeroplane are designed in such a way that the streamlines of air above the surface of the wing travels with higher velocities when compared to the streamlines of air below the surface of the wing that means v2 is greater than v1 therefore pressure at the upper surface is p2 pressure at the lower surface is p1 how they are related pressure and the velocity inversely related if v2 is greater than v1 obviously p1 is greater than p2 which means f1 is greater than f2 f1 acts in which direction upward direction f2 acts in which direction downward direction if this force which force if f1 exceeds or greater than the weight of the aeroplane then aeroplane starts in motion starts to move in which direction upward direction this is how uh, uh, aeroplane moves in upward direction next working on atomizer a insect spray perfume spray how it is working so actually in a perfume sprayer there is a vessel which consists of perfume this is to be called perfume any perfume so here this vessel is fitted with a tube long narrow tube using any stopper rubber stopper so above this tube above this vessel and another tube is attached which consists of a movable piston a movable piston is provided for this tube at the other end of the tube there is a fine pore so when the piston moves in forward direction when the piston moves in forward direction then what will happen the streamlines of air in this tube streamlines of air in this tube moves with what velocity moves with higher velocities streamlines of air above the tube with moves with higher velocities v1 what about the streamlines of air inside the vessel streamlines of air inside the vessel have got to be lesser velocity v2 same reason here once again v1 is greater than v2 v1 is greater than v2 then pressure at this point p1 pressure inside the vessel p2 so if p1 is greater than v2 what about p1 p1 should be less than p2 which means pressure inside the vessel is more when compared to the outside p2 is greater than p1 which means p2 is greater than p1 
then what will happen? The liquid or perfume starts to move in this direction. Upward direction through this tube. Through this tube. As the piston moves in forward direction, this perfume gets sprayed into fine droplets. This is how the insect sprayer or perfume sprayer works. As the piston moves in forward direction, streamlines appear. In this tube moves the velocity V1, which is greater than the velocity of uh, streamlines appear inside the tube. V1 is greater than V2. Obviously, V1 should be less than V2. Or V2 is greater than V1. Pressure inside the container is more than compared to outside. Fluid always most from region of higher pressure to lower pressure liquid or perfume starts to move upward direction through this particular tube and hence it is gets it gets sprayed into fine droplets next normally you can observe the blowing of roofs of the houses or buildings during the wind storms how it is working so here also same principle the streamlines of air below the below the roofs Travels with velocities v1. Streamlines of air above the above the roofs travels with speeds v2. So from the figure itself only it is clear that streamlines of air above the surface should travel a larger distance. So that means here velocity should be more. Here velocity should be less. v2 should be greater than v1. What about the pressure at this point? Pressure at this particular point will take pressure as P2. Pressure below the roof is taken as P1. In what direction? In what direction the force due to the pressure P2 is acting? Force due to the pressure P2 is acting in downward direction. Force due to the pressure P2 acting in downward direction. This is F2. Force due to the pressure P1 acts in which direction? Upward direction. Force due to the pressure P1 acts in upward direction. So streamlines of air above the roof travel the la travels a larger distance in order to compensate this distance travelled by the streamlines of air. So above the roof, these streamlines travel with higher speed. When compared to the streamlines of air below the roof, which is nothing but V2 is greater than V1. If P2 is greater than P1, what about P2? P2 should be less than P1. P1 is more when compared to P2. If P1 is greater than P2, what about F1 and F2? How they are related? F1 should be greater than F2. F2 acting in which direction? Downward direction. F1 acting in which direction? Upward direction. F1 is greater than F2. That means upward force is more when compared to the downward force. When this force due to the pressure exceeds the weight of the roof, then roofs will be blown off because of wind storms. So these are the three important applications of Barnabas theorem. Okay, students. Next problem: Water is in streamline flow along a horizontal pipe with non-uniform cross section at a point in a pipe where area of cross section is 10 cm square. The velocity of the water is 1 meter per second and pressure is 2000 pascal. So calculate the pressure at another point where the area of cross section is 5 cm square. So what about the area, what about the pressure at the another point? So there is a tube, there is a tube of non-uniform cross section having the area at one point 10 cm square. So this area is given at one point area A1 is for how much? 10 cm. At a point in a pipe where, where the area of cross section is 10 cm square, the velocity of water at this particular point, velocity of water, V1 is V1. How much? V1 is 1 meter per second. Next the pressure at this region, pressure at this end is also given. That is nothing but how much? P1 is given. How much? 2000 Pascal. 
So you are asked to calculate the pressure at another point where the area of cross section is 5 cm. The area of cross section of this end is also given. A2 is equal to how much? 5 cm square. What about the pressure at this particular point? At this particular end. So this is the problem. Water is in streamline flow along a tube of non-uniform area of cross section. One end is having the area of cross section 10 cm square. Water enters the tube with a speed of how much? 1 meter per second. The pressure at this point is equal to how much? 2000 Pascal. The water leaves the tube through another end where the area of cross section is 5 cm square. What about the pressure at the other end? Here, the value of V2 is not given. The velocity with which water exits the tube, V2, is also known. V2 is also not given. A1 is given, V1 is given. A2 is given, V2 is not given. So then you can use the which formula. What is the relation between area of cross section and the speed? Area of cross section and the speed. The product of area of cross section and the speed is always equal to a constant. Which equation is this one? Equation of continuity. Then you can write, using this equation you can write A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. First, you have to find out the value of V2. How can we write this equation? V2 is equal to A1 by A2 into V1. V2 is equal to take A2 to LHS equals to the denominator. Then V2 is equal to how much? A1 value, V1 how much? 10 cm square. You only to convert it into SI units. Why is here is also in centimeter square. Another area is also in centimeter square. The ratio centimeter square to centimeter square gets cancelled. So 10 divided by A2 value 5. V1. V1 value is what how much? V1 value is V1. 1 meter per second. That is equal to how much? V2 value 2 meter per second. So this is the speed with which water exits the tube. So, but we are asked, we are asked to find out the value of what? P2. A1 is V1, A2 is V1. V1 is V1, V2 is gets already calculated. Then how can we find out the P1 is V1? How can we find out the value of P2? Then according to which principle? According to Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle or Bernoulli's theorem. You can write the equation as what about Bernoulli's theorem? The sum of all the three forms of energy is now equal to constant. That is pressure energy given. Next kinetic energy. Next potential energy is now equal to constant. The two ends are almost at the same height from the surface. That means pressure energy should be same. Therefore, the potential energy is same. No need to consider the potential energy expression. I will write the pressure energy at the end, end as V1 plus half into rho into V1 square is equal to P2 plus half into rho into V1 square. V2 square. I will not consider the potential energy term here. Why means the two ends are at the almost same height from the surface. Heights are not given. That means they are, that means they are at the same height from the surface. You are also find out the value of P2 here. Here are the terms. P2 is equal to P1 plus half into rho into V1 square minus half into rho into V2 square. P2 is equal to P1 plus half into rho into. I will take half into a common. Then the equation becomes V1 square minus V2 square. I will write here. P2 is equal to P1 value is given 2000 plus half into rho. What do you mean by rho? Density. Density of the water is equal to how much? Density of water is 1000. Standard value. Into V1 square. V1 value is given how much? 1 square minus V2 square. V2 value is how much? That is P2 is equal to 2000 plus half into 1000 means that is equal to how much? 500. 1 minus 4. 1 minus 4. Minus 3. That is P2 is equal to 2000 minus 1500. That is equal to P2 is equal to how much? 
pressure at the axis end. So thereby you can calculate the pressure at the another end where the area of friction is 5 centimeters. How can you find out this one? First, by using the equation of continuity, we will find out the velocity at the exit end, V2 value, that is equal to 2 meter per second. Then by using the Bernoulli's principle, by using the Bernoulli's equation, you can find out the pressure at the exit.